Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another blue white artifact deck, although this time around we're focusing on Transmutation Font, another one of these mythic rare artifacts from the big score. This was suggested and voted on by my supporters on Patreon. 5 mana for an artifact that can tap to create our choice of a blood token, a clue token, or a food token, and then we can also potentially pay 3 mana, tap it, sacrifice 3 artifact tokens with different names to search our library for any artifact card and put it onto the battlefield. So Transmutation Font, if we can play it and quickly activate it, is often gonna search up Portal to Phyrexia as an impactful spell that will make the opponent sacrifice three creatures and then can reanimate a creature turn after turn. We could also maybe get our one-off Inner Sun, which makes our spells uncounterable and lets us discover five each turn. Or maybe the new Nexus of Becoming, which will draw us an additional card at the beginning of combat each turn, and then we can exile an artifact or creature from our hand to make a 3-3 Golem artifact creature version of that card, so we can also maybe cheat a Portal to Phyrexia into play in the form of a 3-3 while still making the opponent sacrifice three creatures, so that can also be quite powerful. So these are some of the payoffs, and then we have some other powerful artifact synergies, as we've already featured in previous builds, including the Simulacrum Synthesizer, which scries two when it enters, and then whenever another artifact with mana value three or greater enters, we get to make a construct token that grows with the number of artifacts we control, and with all the artifact tokens we generate in this deck, those constructs can get out of hand very quickly. And then there's also the Thousand Moon Smithy, which will make a very similar Gnome Soldier token, although it's important that it has a different name, so this makes Gnome Soldiers, whereas this makes Construct, so they are different names for the transmutation font purposes, so it's nice to have differently named artifact creature tokens, and then the Smithy can also transform into the Barracks, and can be accomplished pretty easily in this deck, since we're making so many artifact tokens, so we can easily tap five of them to make the Barracks, and that can start generating even more Soldiers. And then Worldwalker Helm also has excellent synergy throughout, saying if we would create one or more artifact tokens, we get to make an additional map token as well. And then for one on a blue, we can tap it to create a token that's a copy of target artifact token we control, so we can start copying constructs or maybe the uh, soldiers we get from the smithy to make even more powerful artifact creatures. Then Malkator is at its best here as well, as we get to make a 3-3 Phyrexian Golem token, so yet another name. And then end of turn, if we created three or more artifacts this turn, we get to make an additional Golem token, and especially with a card like Worldwalker Helm, it's trivial to generate additional artifacts, and Transmutation font making tokens or searching up artifact can also help enable Malkator. And then a Thran Spider also makes two artifacts with one card, making a Power Stone token which can help us ramp, and yet another differently named artifact token for Transmutation font. This also has Reach, so it can maybe get in the way of a Slick Shot, at least until they can increase its toughness, and also has an activated ability if we run out of other card draw effects to find additional artifacts in the top cards. Now the early game of the deck mainly consists of the Enigma Jewel, and it's very powerful in combination with Collector's Vault, as we can play turn 1 Enigma Jewel, turn 2 Vault, and then use the mana from Enigma Jewel to immediately draw and discard and make a treasure token, so that can not only make another differently named token, but it can also start getting us ahead of mana and giving us a lot of useful card selection. And then a turn 2 Deduce also plays well off a turn 1 Enigma Jewel, as we can potentially immediately sacrifice the clue token to essentially draw two cards for just two mana, which is also a very efficient rate. So as you'll notice, we have a lot of differently named tokens throughout. We've got treasure tokens, clue tokens, power stone tokens, we've got Phyrexian golems, map tokens, we've got constructs, we've got gnome soldiers, and then Sunfall as our sweeper can even leave behind an incubator token, so that's yet another token. And then in our mana base we have Mirex making 1-1 mites, which are also artifact tokens, and the Restless Anchorage can also attack to make additional map tokens, so we pretty much have all the artifact tokens you could make in standard in one deck, which means the transmutation font is going to be very easy to enable. And uh, that pretty much wraps up our entire deck. The mana base has lots of blue eye dual lands. Also want a lot of untapped blue sources to play a turn one Enigma Jewel, so that also informed some of my decisions here with the mana base, and that's why I'm playing the full set of Sea Chrome Coast as well. And then Blast Zone also has a bit of synergy with the Enigma Jewel, since it can help pay for the ability. Same with the Vault, which gives us a bit of additional card selection.
collection. And then Mirex can also benefit from Enigma Jewel, giving it a bit of a discount. And then we've got the Restless Anchorage, which can also maybe be activated with Enigma Jewel, so we don't need to spend as much mana activating it. And then I haven't even mentioned potentially crafting the Enigma Jewel into Locus of Enlightenment, which can also happen since we have lots of artifacts with activated abilities. And then the Locus will double up all those activated abilities and uh, essentially absorb their effects. So that can also be a nice late game activation. So yeah, there's a lot going on here. The deck is a little slow to get going, unless we start with Enigma Jewel into Collector's Vault. So aggro matchups are going to be a little tough, but hopefully we'll face some more controlling decks so we get to showcase all our synergies. So let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with not the most explosive hand, but still a keepable one, I think. Just hoping we don't face turn one mountain. All right, see Chrome Coast, I don't mind. Turn two, we can deduce. Turn three, maybe go for spider so we can ramp out our font. That does get countered, that's fine. We can try Synthesizer next. And then next turn I could play Helm and activate it, copying the token we get. Which is going to be pretty strong. And then I'll keep one land on top. Or do I? I've got a few more in hand. So next turn Helm activates. Yeah, I guess we don't need both. Opponent's likely going to use Demolition Field on one of these two. And Jace was maybe going to mill us anyway. I'll take note of all your so it didn't matter if we kept on top. Okay, we want to get on the board now. And what better way than making some large constructs. And then if we want to play around spot removal, I activate now. If they have a board wipe, I guess we're not too upset if they have to use it here. But I wouldn't want them to destroy the construct in response and then have no constructs left. Temporary lockdown is painful. Although we still have our three mana artifacts at least. No secret escapes my grasp. All right, I could try to go for Transmutation Fonts, which at least triggers Synthesizer if it enters a battlefield. If I go for Malkator, it does not trigger Synthesizer, but I would have the mana to use Helm, and I can pay for another No More Lies. So maybe Malkator is actually the play. Makes it more likely that we can actually finish off this Jace, which is a thorn in our side. That seemed to resolve pretty smoothly. So I'm not too worried about a counter spell going forward too much. Question again is if we use Helm now or if we wait. If I use it now, we actually get to trigger Malkator an additional time, so that seems worth it. And I'll hang on to the map tokens. Alright, so opponents will need another lockdown pretty much. Or a more expensive board wipe. Organic mines are easily quelled. Yep, Sunfall. All right, let's resolve the font now. And then I could go exploring since we could use some more lands, I guess. Portal to Phyrexia is pretty far from getting cast. Could still keep it on top just so we don't mill more cards. But uh, yeah, I don't think I'll necessarily want to search it up with the transmutation font, even if I have the chance. So we can pass and then Font can activate to make a clue token, presumably. But we can wait until lockdown resolves. Alright, that's a lot of sweepers. But uh, yeah, we still have our engine intact. You can be made to and our opponent's eventually going to run out. As long as we don't have to face a farewell, that would be rough. So, clue token, plus a map from the helm. 
And I can play another font if I'd like. Although then I wouldn't have the mana to activate fonts to search up whenever I want. But uh, yeah, I guess the problem now is we need an extra token with a different name. Could make it a might token from Mirex. And then I can still activate fonts. And then what would I be interested in getting? Maybe the inner sun to make my stuff uncounterable. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. One, two, three. And if our opponent's holding a counterspell, they'll just have to watch as we now make everything uncounterable. Trigger synthesizer. And what do we discover? Enigma Jewel. Could still come in handy. Helps pay for the font activation, maybe. Opponent starts milling again. They might have another Jace they want to deploy. 32 cards remain. So we want to start upping the pressure. Opponent taps out for Deluge. Can I grow this up to a 2020? It's going to be challenging. But maybe not impossible. Probably means I don't want to sack anything to the fonts. If I play another one, that can make more tokens. The Rain Spider also helps. So let's say we start with Transmutation fonts. Then we can just activate to make another token. Yeah, this is not getting up to 20, sadly. But I think this is still a fine play. And then I can copy a token. And then activate these to each make a token. So I could hit for 17 here, which is a little bit shy of lethal. Maybe keep one untapped in case they do have another lockdown next turn. Because we would make another token plus get another map. And then Enigma Jewel can also help us sack a clue. I guess I'll play Malkator. Okay, let's see what they've got. If they have two Jaces in hand, we die. Sunfall, that's fine. So... We'll just get more tokens next turn. So I'll make a clue. And use Enigma Jewel to sacrifice one of them. Okay. So go for another transmutation font, I imagine. And then we'll just keep some uh, abilities available. Could also pay three to get another artifact. Maybe get another synthesizer, for instance. Yeah, I guess that's not a bad idea. Although I'll have to make a token first here. Alternatively, I can activate the helm to copy the construct, but I prefer just getting another synthesizer at that point. So we have three differently named tokens. Map tokens are plenty. And then... Yeah, Nexus of Becoming is also an option to make some of our cards into 3-3 three, three creatures. Smithy can be transformed to make more tokens. Um, I guess Smithy might be better than another Synthesizer at this point. Yeah, I guess it's between Smithy and a uh, Nexus of Becoming. This doesn't have haste, so yeah, I'll get the smithy. Trigger synthesizer. They must have uh, milled the other synthesizer since we couldn't search that one up. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for me. Get to discover. And do I even want to cast this here? We have 26 cards remaining. This can mill for... Six. 
Yeah, I guess it's fine. Alright. Do you have double Jace? Do you have another sweeper? I'm gonna start by milling, so that's not a good sign. Sunfall, okay. Make a food token just in case. And then I can easily transform the smithy by tapping all these map tokens. And then we also have some creature lands or mirex we can put to use. For now it's just gonna be fonts. And get a bunch of triggers. And then we can maybe use transmutation font once again get another card out of the deck or I can just keep my mana available to make a token although I think we can do both so sure and what's even left to get could get another world walker helm or another smithy, since we transformed the first one. Okay. Well, they need another board wipe, pretty much. But I have to be careful not to draw too many more cards, or uh, a single Jace is lethal. They probably have some counter spells in hand that haven't been very useful since we put the Inner Sun in play. They might have cards like the Wandering Emperor that they haven't put to use yet. And maybe some spot removal. So if I go to copy a token, our opponent likely removes it in response. Alternatively, we just activate Mirex. And then I can maybe sack a bunch of map tokens to grow the might to make that a lethal threat as well. So not gonna bother transforming since we already have one. Okay, so yeah, I want to make sure this is lethal. So we have to start exploring with our maps. And hope to find a non-land here. Oh no, another land, so now Jace is probably gonna be a lethal, but this might be my best chance of just winning right now. So yeah, let's imagine our opponent animates the incubator, has a wandering emperor, and another spot removal spell. I just want to make sure I have five lethal attackers. All right, we'll keep that one on top. Can also tap the uh, heading module to pay for it. And I could also clear the opponent's blockers by getting Portal to Phyrexia, I suppose. But I'll only be able to clear one since I didn't animate the other one. So I'll grow this a little bit more so it's still lethal in the face of Wandering Emperor, gaining them some life. And then I'll likely get the other portal since we should still have one in the deck somewhere. Just double checking. All right. So, this should be enough. And then activate font. Okay. 
get portal. I remove a blocker. And time to attack. What if they have double wandering emperor? I guess we can sack another map here. Is this enough? There's Wandering Emperor. That's fine. Anyone who harms my people must contend with me. This is you have another one. For hurting my people. March for zero. Okay. Soul Partition. All right. Two mana. Two lethal threats. They can make one extra blocker with Incubator. So yeah, had we not activated Mirex, but just tried to copy an existing construct, they remove it in response, and we don't actually attack for lethal here. And then, yeah, we could have died to a Jace. So we actually had to go through the pain of uh, growing up this Might token with our map tokens. But yeah, it worked out in the end. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with uh, an exciting hand here. Enigma Jewel lets us the juice and sack our clue if we'd like, or we can keep it around for transmutation font. Finding a treasure vault would be great, although we are up against aggro, so we'll need all the speed we can get. So we'll just pass for now. A red white with a virtuoso, so they're gonna go all in on the virtuoso next turn. Well, we don't really have a way to punish that. And yeah, we'll just sack the clue. Another deduce. For now we can play spider. So next turn we can play transmutation fonts, perhaps. Our opponent plotting a show-off. And a Homestead Courage for now. So the Virtuosa is going to hurt. Yeah, the goal is to survive until we can Sunfall, pretty much. Although that's still going to take us two turns. And this is already hitting for ten. At least we can hold off a Swiss Spear. Okay, so... If the plan next turn is to Sunfall, I guess um, I can just make another spider as a blocker, just to have as much toughness as possible. And that's pretty much it. I guess we could still deduce as well, since we can use our Power Stone. So that actually works out pretty nicely. And then we can uh, maybe sack the clue end of turn as well. Thran Spider at least has reach, so it can block a show off. Alright. Well, the Sunfall's gonna be effective if we can survive. But if they have a monstrous rage, we might still be dead here. And Lauren's escape is fine. So we take six. Could still get burnt out, of course, if they have a play with fire. But Sunfall's looking good. And then I can also use Enigma Jewel to immediately make a 4-4, should they have another haste creature. Codebreaker, alright. There it is. And an Anger, so we still trade at least. Even though they get to trample for one. Yeah, Enigma Jewel. Definitely quite useful here, although I guess we could have used the Power Stones as well. Alright, what's next? So we can Transmutation Font, and then make a Food Token, 
so we can maybe survive a burn spell or we can go to thousand moon smithy and then make a large blocker i don't know if this deck plays play with fire since they're more of a pump spell deck but uh all right our opponent concedes that works for me on to the next one okay we're on the draw with a keepable hand enigma jewel sets up the juice and immediately sank the clue and then we've got some nice three mana plays available facing blue black typically don't mind facing control strategies since their removal doesn't line up all that great against our artifact engines and we can do everything at instant speed for now too I waste the opponent's mana in case they're holding a counter spell all right and then kick things off with synthesizer so every subsequent artifact we play will generate a huge token and see yeah, how transmutation font looks good do i want a deserted beach so next turn likely going for thrain spider trigger synthesizer play a tap land and then we already have land five available so i'm not in a hurry to draw another land Alright, Jace, Camillus, maybe get rid of that transmutation font. That's okay, we've got more in the deck. And then Enigma Jewel also actually helps us activate cards like Restless Anchorage, as it's also an ability, although Field of Ruin, a good answer. Alright, Deadly Cover-Up wipes the board. At least they couldn't collect evidence to get rid of any specific card. So we can finish off Jace if they don't have cut down. The rest can have a look, probably takes the helm. Although keep in mind, if our opponent puts a bunch of our artifacts in the graveyard, we can also eventually craft if there's multiples with activated abilities. We have Fonts, Spider and Helm so far. So that's already three, so we just need to get up to nine mana to activate it. And then since our opponent's tapped out, I think Anchorage finish off Jace is fine. And then if I play Collector's Vault, I can still activate that as well. I could activate now, use a treasure, or just play an untapped land. Although, yeah, I guess that's fine. Finish off Jace, make a map token. And then end of turn I can activate Collector's Vault in case they have another duress. I don't want to draw into one of my payoffs. Alright, what do we get rid of? Another Enigma Jewel perhaps? Don't think they have a way to really interact with the Jewel, other than maybe an Odawara to bounce it. Okay, so let's count up our mana here. Five, six, seven, eight. Can make another treasure with Collector's Vault, so we can transform Enigma Jewel. That's pretty tempting. Or for now, I can just play another Synthesizer and take it from there. And then we'll keep a spider on top, can draw into it. Probably won't need Sunfall, but I'll hang on to it for now. Play spider, and then trigger double synthesizer, so our opponent's going to need another board wipe. And then we still have the Enigma Jewel plan as a backup. Could also sack a map token, but can actually also use it to transform Enigma Jewel, potentially. Opponent with a robbery for five. There's only one author Sunfall they could hit in our deck. And then I guess a portal to Phyrexia they could potentially hard cast, so that could be bad as well. Uh, 
Alright, just a memory deluge. So they're maybe digging for their own sweeper, although they won't have the mana to cast another deadly cover up at least. Ooh, Path of Pearl, that works. Okay, so our tokens are gone. And I think it's time to transform Enigma Jewel now. Maybe after using Collector's Vault. Finding Portal to Phyrexia. There's not too many creatures to return from the opponent's side. And we have a couple Thrain Spiders at the moment. I'll still hang on to it, since Sunfall's probably not going to be great. And then... Craft... And we'll just select cards in our graveyard. And I could go for another Enigma Jewel, I guess. Sure. Okay, so what can we do here? Let's have a look. So this taps for two mana. Can uh, activate this to make some tokens. Or we can use a 3-mana ability, since we have 3 treasures, to get whatever we want. Yeah, let's do that. I guess, let's see, do I have 3 different tokens? Because I will need to use the treasures. So then I would have just map and power stone left. So I don't think that would actually work. But let's see what happens. Yeah. So that doesn't work. So instead, we're just going to have to make a token this turn. But we can do that at instant speed. But then next turn we should be able to get some stuff. And then I guess a clue token is probably the best one to make for now. Opponent with their smithy that they stole from us. And Malkator, so they might actually get the second token out of it. So now Portal to Phyrexia is looking better, since we would also eventually get Malkator back. And we'll go for Clue Token times two. And then now activate. This looks good. We'll trigger twice. And I know which artifacts to get, assuming our opponent didn't steal them. Get a portal to Phyrexia, and then the uh, Nexus of Becoming looks good too. Trigger Synthesizer. This is beautiful. Could also maybe get the Inner Sun to make our stuff uncounterable. If I get the Nexus, I could put another portal in play, but that might be overextending a little bit. Okay, so those are nice and big. And then, uh, sure, I guess we can still activate a Collector's Vault. Which will also trigger twice with a Transform Jewel. So it pays for itself. Okay. And then I'll save the spider in case of a board wipe. And that's probably good enough for now. Okay, so our opponent's gonna need to pretty much cast a board wipe every turn. Or find a way to win the game by maybe milling us with Jace. 25 cards remaining. Can probably make it so every individual construct is lethal. Opponents can transform the smithy if they'd like. Although I don't know if they have many ways to trigger it. Alright, opponent flashing back deluge. So they're looking for another path of peril pretty much. Did they find it? 
They did not. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's missing. Some one or two mana plays, perhaps. But, uh, yeah, curving synthesizer into smithies. Quite powerful. So on the play, this could still work out. Opponent with Proving Ground could be a domain strategy. Which could have their own Sunfall to reset the board. And then Thran Spiders seems fine. Uh, could also keep Waste, so we'll be closer to casting the Inner Sun. Yeah, sure. Probably still going for Smithy first. Maybe that will get exiled by a Leyline Binding. Or they could exile the Synthesizer. Fair enough. So now we would only get one token. In which case, going Spider to set up Inner Sun could be a little bit better. Although it's still a close call. Yeah, I'll uh, try it. Otawara also could have bounced Leyline Binding, but... That doesn't accomplish too much. Opponent passes it back. So we can hit for two. And then attempt to resolve our six mana artifact. Possible they have another Leyline Binding in hand. Just cycling Garden. Okay, so we will get to discover Finding the Juice, not our most impactful card. But next turn we can maybe cast both Synthesizer and Smithy if we find another land. Opponent cycling Herd Migration to find a basic. So their hand might have some expensive spells in it, Atraxa comes to mind. Archangel of Wrath also doesn't line up all that great here. Or they might have a build with some tools to fight aggro, which aren't lining up. Lucas, interesting. Now all of a sudden I'm thinking our opponent might be on an Invasion of Alara build instead. That can combo off with a Bramble Familiar. So... What's next? We did draw the untapped lane, so I could go Synthesizer plus Smithy. Can't really take out Luca. But uh, yeah, that seems fine. And then we can set up our Discover here with Inner Sun. So Discovering into Helm could be decent. And then how close are we to Casting Portal? Three, six, seven. Not quite there yet. So we can maybe bottom that, keep Helm on top. Play Smithy, make a token. And trigger Synthesizer to make another. And then end of turn, find the Helm, which will trigger Synthesizer as well. Alright, so our opponent's gonna need a Sunfall here to reset the board. Maybe they have a build with Carnosaur that can discover into a way to copy it and make a bunch of seven powered dinosaurs with haste. So, not entirely sure what to expect here. At least we've got a few blockers back. Eh, just gonna be a hard cast Flash Gorger. That's acceptable. Kind of small in comparison to our constructs. And then we could transform Smithy by tapping some of these artifacts. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough. So we could potentially make another copy of our construct, make them all enormous, and then attack, forcing at least a couple chum blocks, but uh, potentially even presenting lethal damage. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a promising hand. Jewel into Collector's Vault is the dream start. And then we can set up our smithy. Opponent on Boros tokens, presumably. Okay, so got to play Soaring City. And we can activate Vault end of turn. Discarding another Enigma Jewel. Next turn, we'll see if we want to play Smithy first or Spider. The Boros matchup can definitely be difficult. Uh, 
And it looks like our opponent has a turn to Convoke, maybe? No, they don't. Interestingly, the Demolition can also blow up our own artifacts, but usually they're interested in making goblins. But yeah, the opponent's deck going very wide very quickly, so we're already under immense pressure. So we can play Spider as not to sack any treasure tokens, and then I can still activate Vaults. Yeah, I had two four blocks just as well as a larger token would, and I'm not in a position to transform the smithy right away, so I may as well wait. Oof, that's rough. Case. I was about to say if they have case, then possible that the token from smithy would have been large enough, although I guess without a treasure it would still just be a 5-5. Five five. So yeah, Spider down, they get to solve the case, and now have a bunch of 2-1s in play. So I need to find Sunfall pretty much to have a chance. Since the board is too far gone to deal with it otherwise. Well, we get a few redraws with Collector's Vault. Spider. Well, <laughs> speak of the devil. I'll take it. Activate Vault just to see what else we have. So I can play Untapped Land, Sunfall to keep my treasures. Probably don't need the Anchorage. And now we get to make an enormous token, which we can also animate using the mana from Enigma Jewel. That's why it's good to have a couple sweepers in the deck. But yeah, I still think this is a pretty rough matchup for us. So we just got lucky to find Sunfall. But on average, I expect a Boros deck to kind of run us over before we establish our powerful engines. And then even if we do get a portal to Phyrexia in play, the opponent can easily sack three creatures without it affecting their plan too much. So it just kind of lines up awkwardly. Warleader's Call. When we're still at 13, it's not too scary. And uh, I'll save my treasures. I would only have to use one to animate the 6-6. Six, six. And I guess we could go on the beat town plan. Alright, fine. Try and get the game over with. For now, we can activate vaults. Find Helm. Helm can be fun. Not the best with the 0-0 uh, zero, zero Phyrexian, but good with the uh, Smithy. So definitely want to get that online. And then we could still play... A Thrain Spider. And then we'll see next turn if we want to transform Smithy. Would have to tap five artifacts. Can maybe tap Spider, Jewel, Vault, two Power Stones. And then still be able to play Helm using the Smithy and activate Helm to make a copy. Yeah, that seems powerful. If they don't have an additional blocker, we could potentially have lethal by just uh, attacking all out. But now with the recruiter, I'll probably go with the plan of Helm, copy a token, and the opponent's just desperately behind. Awesome. Alright, so yeah, lucky Sunfall here to beat Boros Convoke, which I do still believe is a pretty bad matchup for the deck, as is Monorad Aggro. So those are some of the most popular archetypes in Best of One which is why I wouldn't really recommend this deck for the best of one ladder, since you're going to end up facing those decks quite a bit, and uh, the wins tend to be pretty lengthy, whereas the losses are going to be over in just a blink of an eye. So not the best deck to rank up, but a lot of fun. If you move to best of three, where the meta game is a little slower, you might have more time to set up, and then, of course, you could always add some counter spells or additional sweepers out of the sideboard, but the more interaction you add, the fewer token makers you have, and then the synergies kind of start falling apart, so it's always fun to be able to play the most streamlined version possible. And uh, yeah, if you're up against some slower decks as we saw here against Control, the deck can be quite brutal. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.